Good morning, everyone. This is the Friday, June 24th meeting of the Elementary School Building Committee. And for those of you who can see me on the screen, you will realize that I have had some surgery on one of my eyes, which means that I don't see the screen very well. And I'm gonna ask Paul to chair so I don't miss people. Um, and the first order will be Paul will just make sure that everyone who's in the committee can hear and be heard. And then he will be turning it over to Margaret with the agenda and Donna. So Paul, you are sure. yes. here for the day. So we've heard Kathy and you hear me. Um, Simone, can you hear? Yes. Okay, Ben? Yes. Okay, uh, Sean? Yes. Uh, Rupert? Here. Jonathan? Yes. Um, Tammy? Yes. Uh, Alicia? Here. Allison? Yes, I'm here. Great, thank you. Um, and if, if we missed it, Mike is gonna be late, we know. And Angelica is maybe tra is traveling. We're not sure if she'll be in. And Phoebe is the only other person we have not seen, but we'll keep an eye out for her. Okay, so the next order of business, I believe, so just to, um, is to turn it over to Margaret and you're going to talk about today's meeting, what we want to yeah. accomplish. Good morning, everybody. I'm just going to pull up the agenda. Can everybody see that? Yes. So um, kind of a milestone here. We're going to um, look today at the preferred schematic report. Um, see if you all have any questions, and then it is destined for submission to the MSBA on Monday um, after we incorporate any comments that we've heard. So um, we're gonna what we're gonna do for the purposes of organizing the meeting, we're gonna walk through the table of contents and talk about the things that are uh, new and have been updated. We're gonna take a vote to submit it. Um, subject to any revisions highlighted. Then we're gonna talk about the schedule for the next couple of months um, as we move into the summer and also do a bit of a <clears throat> interest check on visits to schools. So that is the plan for the meeting. Um, Donna and Tim, do you want to, I have the table of contents and can put it up if you want. Yeah, that would, want be, me to? That would be great, that? thank you. Okay. Yeah. So I will run the table of contents by and Donna, Tim and Rick can talk to that. Sure, so okay. we um, sent it out, I think it was Wednesday night and it is certainly uh, a lot of reading. So hopefully a lot of it was everything that we've discussed, but just to quickly go through it. And a lot of it is just reconfirming and restating things that MSBA has asked for clarification um, over through the PDP and then up till now. But the introduction is pretty self-explanatory. It's, it's almost redundant to the final evaluation of alternatives and the uh, preferred solution. The final evaluation of existing conditions, MSBA wanted us to acknowledge the Wildwood preliminary geotech report, which was back in 2015. Uh, we're including it for reference really, as now we're not even considering Wildwood anymore. We updated or we included the final completion of the traffic study. And then the town has identified or, or created a narrative which was very thoughtful on the potential future use of the Wildwood site. Um, the final evaluation of alternatives captures everything that we've talked about. It talks about the sites, the analysis, how we're going to address the attributes of both sites actually, because this is looking at all of the options we included the phasing diagrams, which hopefully will be very helpful as we talk about the reasons why really Fort River was selected, 
the conceptual drawings, which included all of the options, as is as all of the options for the various floor plans, layouts, and the reasons why we selected cert the of uh, the preferred layout, the preferred uh, site plan. And the basis of design we've all gone through and all of that's captured in the cost estimate. And that also includes that we're including PVs and ground source is the basis of design for cost estimating. Uh, we then I think pretty much um, include the summary of the options, which was pretty straightforward as well as the um, budget and the cost summary. The preferred solution, again, it's it's everything that we've been talking about. It's really taking the information from the evaluation of alternatives. What we did do was highlight in the educational program what MSBA had questions on rate related to the ed program, just for really ease for them to see that we've addressed those questions. We've included the space summary. They asked for a variation from the initial space summary and you'll see it's negligible. Um, there really wasn't, there was no change to the overall square footage or net floor area as MSBA calls it. We just modified a couple of spaces like the reflection room. Instead of one at 150, we um, the, the district preferred to have two at 75, but the overall net floor area doesn't change. Um, sustainability documentation, which we really haven't talked about. So we would like to say that based on the preliminary, and we'll be getting into this at schematic design, that we're at 64 yes points right now, which puts us at goal. So that's pretty exciting. So um, for Donna, for, for, yeah. for lead. For lead. Yes, thank you. Which is, uh, you want to explain a little bit about LEAD? Because I'm not sure everybody knows about that. Uh, so there are two paths, and I, I think we've talked about this prior, um, that, that we have stated that it, I think it was in the basis of design that we were going to attempt to achieve uh, silver for LEAD. LEAD is, um, there, there are two organizations that evaluate energy, material, site, um, as it relates to sustainability of the building. One is New England Chips, which is, some of you may know, but it's a lesser known entity. And then there's LEED. And we believe that LEED is um, the preferred method to move forward, especially because it's new construction. Everyone is, everyone knows it. There's no cost differential between the two. You still have to pay for them to evaluate the submissions, et cetera. So uh, we're, we're moving forward with LEAD unless we would like to talk about that. We can certainly have that conversation. We can switch later um, during schematic design if we choose, but we're really pleased that we're at a solid 64 points for LEAD, which puts us at gold. There are gonna be some digging that we're gonna to have to do to confirm that we can achieve all those. And Kim, I don't recall the exact number of maybe points, but we have quite a few maybe points. So we have 22 maybe points. 22. So there's another, so, yeah, there's another bunch of points on the table. So I don't wanna get anyone too excited, but you know, if, if we can achieve majority of those, platinum I think is at 80. So, so part of the reason this is important um, is that there are, the MSBA does offer additional incentive points for high, high level of energy performance. And this is a metric for measuring that. So that's gonna come up as we start to get into the discussion of the MSBA reimbursement in the next phase. Yeah, and, and we're confident we're gonna achieve, MSBA doesn't care if you are just certified or if you hit a um, level, whether it's silver, gold, platinum, whatever, all they're concerned about is that you reduce your energy usage or energy savings um, by 20% over code, I believe. So we're confident based on the design and the town's goals that we'll easily achieve that. 
And then utilizing the PVs, especially because they're incorporated as part of the project, we get additional points, et cetera. So we're really in an excellent position um, to, meet, to meet lead gold. And we're confident that we'll get the additional two reimbursement points from MSBA. So um, once we have a net zero meeting, I'm getting off topic, but we do have a net zero meeting. We're trying to set that up beginning of July and then we can report back once we have a decision on that. Um, we're including the building plans, the site plans as it relates to the preferred solution, the total project budget and local funding. There's some narrative in there about, actually I think, was that updated after we submitted this? We incorporated it, right? We got it in, in time, Tim, we did. So- I hope. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 because we, we had to modify it yesterday, right? There was some ads to yesterday, so it was included in this. Um, just talking about the process and, and target dates to receive town approval and funding. Um, the school department worked really hard on putting together a budget statement, which really reflects what your current expenses and revenue are on the district side, and then any changes on the expenses once the new building is online. So that's included there. And then again, MSBA just wanted to understand what other projects are going on in town. So we're including the fiscal year 23 capital improvement plan, as well as an updated project schedule, which has not changed. And then the local actions and approvals are self-explanatory. So I know it was a lot of reading, but hopefully it's nothing new, um, except for maybe the, the sustainability document, which just demonstrates how we're, our path to gold. Well, so one thing that was new, um, and I don't, because I'm not sure um, anyone had a chance to look at it, we're going to talk about it a little bit, is the overall schedule. De I, part of my contribution to this effort is developing an overall schedule for the project that allows the MSBA to start to plan for their own internal staffing for reviews. Um, but it's, a, it's an important moment when the PSR goes in to set an overall plan for the schedule for the project. So before we turn to that, does anybody have any questions on the table of contents or the PSR to the degree that you've been able to look at it? Just looking for hands. Not seeing any hands. Okay, well then if it makes sense, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna pull up the schedule and then if there are no questions on the schedule or after discussion of schedule, then I think we are probably good to take our vote if that sounds okay. So let me pivot to the schedule. And I'm gonna give me a minute to enlarge this because it's not really visible at the size. Um, So um, this is what's called a Gantt chart. Um, and it's got lines over to the right that sort of tell you, give you a, a graphic sense of the bits and pieces. But I'm going to, for the purposes of this discussion today, I am just gonna look at, the, at this roll up, um, which is the, the milestone dates. So if everybody can see that, um, I'm just going to say that, you know, we are actually here, this line. So at this point, we, as you know, we submitted the PDP in March, and now these are all the items, uh, schedule items that are part of the preferred schematic report that are milestones within it. So I'm going to go on past that to look at what happens next. So just a second, are those... 2021 years, correct? 22. I'm just looking, I'm missing, maybe I'm missing it, but. Oh yeah, there's a couple of these that need to be changed to 22. Okay. Yeah. Um, on the, 
schematic. So here we are. Margaret, the, the only maybe other thing that we just want to mention is that our facility assessment subcommittee meeting has been confirmed. Yes. And that's oh. the, yeah, the 22nd, not the 21st. So that's a meeting with, uh, it's a kind of peer review by some of the members of the MSBA board. And it's about a 45, 50 minute meeting that will occur on August 3rd. And so the attendees at that, I think at this point are Kathy, Mike, and is there anybody else from the committee who was gonna come? I think not. So it's mostly a dialogue between the committee members, the designer and the superintendent. So. Um, okay, so let's talk about what happens next. So there, the, the overall, you know, as you know, where we're, where we're trying to get to is a building in, that is occupied for uh, the fall of 2026. So the steps to get there are, the next immediate step is schematic design. Uh, and this is going to occur the starting tomorrow, no, starting Tuesday after we get the submission in, um, and will end in December. Um, the, the MSBA has not yet published the submission dates for uh, 2023, but we're essentially looking at submitting in most likely in early January or, or just to get past the holidays. And that we'll be able to confirm that date when they publish their dates for um, submissions and board meetings. So we're, well, these are a little bit of a guesstimate, but backing up to you know, where we need to end, um, you know, after the, how fast this process is felt, um, this will feel a little bit more measured um, but not a lot. We think we're recommending that we uh, set up um, a committee meeting schedule that is uh, about every two weeks. We may not need all those meetings. Um, and what's going to happen, the first two big items that we want to tackle in July are the ground source versus air source uh, choice for the building system, for the heating and cooling source. And then we want to take on the discussion about construction delivery, which is the, the understanding, getting you to a level of comfort with the difference between design, bid, build, and CM at risk that would allow you to give direction to the team about what you want to pursue. Um, then there's a bunch of different tasks, but in a nutshell, the important one is kind of here which is that we want to be able to, for the design team to have completed their design to the level that can, it can be estimated in a detailed fashion by uh, the beginning of November. So that by the beginning of December, we would be able to present to you the cost estimates and the cost estimate, re estimate re reconciliation as we just did with the PSR. But it's a, it's now we're estimating one option. And what is important is to get to a cost that can be, uh, be used as the basis of the funding agreement and can be depended on for the course of the project. So um, once that cost estimate is determined and the committee has signed off on it, then the council can vote to put the project on the ballot. Um, so the next big step then is funding the project, which requires the MSBA's approval as well as the local approval. And as you all probably know, there's really two steps for the local approval. There's a debt exclusion vote, and then the council also has to vote to bond. Now the council can vote to bond before or after the debt exclusion vote, but tentatively, um, working with um, Lynn Griesmer uh, last week, I think we've, we're, we're putting a pin in having the debt exclusion vote in the second half of March. And then the council will decide when to bond, but tentatively they would bond in April. And then the project funding agreement occurs and the MSBA board takes a vote. 
Um, I haven't put the MSBA board vote in here because we don't actually have their dates yet, but that will be part of the process. And then we're launching into what's called module six, which will take us all through several important milestones in the design process and end with putting the project out to bid in May of approximately May of 2024. Now, these numbers aren't set in stone, obviously, they're subject to change, but um, this is, you have to start somewhere. So this is kind of a first attempt. Um, I did this in uh, collaboration with the design team. So hopefully these dates will work for them. So it would be bid in the, I guess I would call it the spring of 2024. And the goal is really to be starting construction in um, July of 2024, right after school ends. So then they're gonna get launched and do construction. And essentially here, this punch list and move in here is, here we are moving in to the building in um, July and August of 2026. Um, once um, the, building is up, the demolition is going to start in that spring as well. So the new building will come down. And then um, as we've discussed them, there would be additional site work, which is landscaping, uh, some parking areas and paving and other things would happen around the school after the school is in session and would end by November. And then there's a closeout period. So. So I'm gonna stop there and see if there are any questions. Hey, Phoebe. Kathy. Hi, um, I have just one on this next period. Um, before we go out to vote um, and before we go to the council, will we have some 3D pictures, something more vivid to show um, about the school, including, and this links into potentially visiting some schools, including to what the outdoor play and learning spaces might look like, something more visual than what we've had so far. So that's my question. And about, and during our committee meetings or in between those committee meetings in terms of meetings with teachers and things, what happens so it, it starts to come to life a bit more? That's my question. So that's a yes, but I'm gonna let Donna take that. <laughs> yeah, sure. I know Kathy. Um, because we, we spent so much time and, and you were fortunate enough to really have a really good evaluation on options and schools and sites and configurations. Um, now, now we can really get into designing the building. So absolutely um, discussion on, on exterior materials. What is it gonna look like? What's the massing gonna look like? And all of that will be represented three-dimensionally as, as the interior. Right, and how those project areas work and, and the organization of the uh, classrooms, et cetera. So Tim, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, we should even be able to kind of do some, maybe even a, a fly through around the site and the building. At yeah, I mean, the, the level, I mean, if you recall back to the interview, uh, the level of moving images and rendering will, will be surpassed during the SD phase because we, we have to represent it in plan section and elevation for the submission. So all of the architects will fully understand. And then we will also represent it in 3D and allow you to move through the building so that maybe someone who's not an architect can uh, fully appreciate the direction that we uh, are going to go. So the answer is yes on that, Kathy. And yeah. Phoebe, yeah, can and you I just, just I'm sorry, can I just want to, Can I just follow up? So we'd be seeing something like that in late August, early September, just in terms of some sense of when we would get that more um, visual. And, and if you don't know, that's fine. I just, you know, uh, that's it, my question. Uh, I, I, you'll, you'll, you'll definitely see the start of drawings. Uh, they will be more fully developed toward the end of the process when we have to, um, you know, present it for uh, cost estimating and uh, okay. further evaluation. But it does take some time to develop those drawings. Okay. Yeah. So, so just really um, quickly on process, 
through schematic design, we want to make sure that we have the absolute best spatial relationships and adjacencies. I think there are a couple of areas that we want to revisit, um, perhaps bringing music downstairs and stuff. So our, our focus is going to be reaffirm everything that we understood at um, PSR and then move it forward. And we'll also, as part of the initial phase, and it and, and might have to wait till September until the staff is back, is go through what we call room data sheets, which will define everything that does occur in every classroom, in every space. So that's sort of the first part while we're also modeling the building. Thank you. So Phoebe, I want to make sure we can hear you and you can hear us. Yes, thank you. Thank you. It looks like we lost Allison. Um, so uh, Rupert. Come on, there we go. Okay, unmuting. Beautiful. So um, as I'm sure folks are aware, I remain extremely concerned about um, how we get on and off the site and how we make that as streamlined and safe as possible. And so I'm concerned what kind of time frame we have to uh, brainstorm and come up with uh, broader solutions uh, given this uh, very fast schedule. So when does site design come into play in terms of uh, egress and access? July 1st. <laughs> we're going to be doing a lot of things in tandem, Rupert. Uh, we're, we're going to even become closer during schematic design. We're going to be spending a lot of time together. Um, we literally need, need to be addressing and, and refining a lot of all, uh, all the different aspects of, of the project. So we'll definitely want to have additional conversations with the town um, and you about traffic and whoever else, but, but we definitely wanna make sure that that begins as, as soon as we start. So now that we have a preferred solution, um, I think our consultants and us are gonna take another look at it, make sure that we're, um, meeting all of the requirements. I think we'll even talk about parking and kind of test that a little bit more and, and then we'll be back to you. So now I, I guess maybe a, a, a general conversation or a general statement is after Monday, um, I think we're gonna want to, the design team is gonna want to just look at everything one one more time to make sure we're putting our best foot forward before we start um, getting into all of these conversations. But I'm talking weeks, right? Or a couple of weeks. So we will be jumping into that immediately. So it will start immediately, but uh, I mean, do we have just three weeks to come up with whatever the final site solution is or three months? I mean, it, it, it can evolve, uh, Rupert, all the way through schematic design. We, we, we have time to thoughtfully think through this. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. And I, I just want to emphasize that because it's town roads, we really need to include our town engineer and superintendent of public works in these discussions. This is yeah. going to be critical um, for how we look at things in those two major intersections. I do want to recognize Mike Morris has joined. Mike, can you hear us? And are, can you hear us? And can you, we hear you? Are you on? Maybe not quite yet. Allison, you had your hand up a couple times. Did you have something you want to say or a question? Um, I I, um, I I I had some connection problems, and I think my question was addressed by Rupert because I when I came back on, I heard some discussion around the traffic situation. I was just wanting to because um, I didn't hear that as a part of the plan because I know that it's outside of our project but I know that um, as soon as the school opens and the traffic starts to be an issue that will be a huge um, feedback loop that we will have to be managing so you know as much as we can handle before that time to try to create a situation for the opening of the school to go as smoothly as possible I think will be really appreciated 
that's just my comment because I know that there was more said that well when I had connection issues so I'll try to uh, go back on the video and, and make sure I catch that. I, I think you, that was the same type of question Rupert had which was we need to start addressing this sooner than later and not wait till the school opens and then address it basically. Yeah, but yeah, I think that that's the same exact uh, sentiment. Good, thank you. And Mike, are you hearing us at all at this point? I am, yeah, my okay. connection's a little iffy, so I'm gonna keep my camera off unless it becomes a problem that it's off. But um, that's fine. if I turn it on, I'm, I'm worried that I'm gonna lose you. That sounds good, thank you. Okay, any other questions at this phase of our meeting? Phoebe. So not a question. Um, I just got a text from somebody who's trying to watch this saying they can only see the speaker. They can't see all of us. Is that the way we typically do it? No, it, I think it's a setting on their own computer. They can, okay. If they go up to the view button on the top right, typically you can see speaker or gallery. Okay. That's not something we control. That's yeah, if they, if they set it to gallery, maybe they'll be able to see everyone. Okay, any other questions or comments from the committee? Okay, so Margaret, back to you. We have more okay, things. well, you know, I think the, the, the action that we, the building committee must take today is to authorize the consultant team to submit the preferred schematic report. Is, does someone wanna make a motion if there are no other questions about the report? I'll make a motion since I, I have delegated chairness to Paul today. I mm -hmm. make a motion that we approve and uh, sending the PSR report as presented to us to MSBA. Is there a second? Oh. Seconded by Jonathan. Uh, any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, I'll call, we have to do a roll call vote on this motion. This is to send the PSR report to the MSBA as, as um, presented. Um, so Kathy? Yes. Um, Tammy? Yes. Rupert? Rupert, aye. Ben? Yes. Jonathan? Yes. Phoebe? Yes. Sean? Yes. Simone? We didn't hear you, Simone. Uh, yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, Alicia? Yes. Thank you. Allison? Yes. Mike? Yes. And Paul's a yes, so that's a unanimous vote. Congratulations, everybody, and thank you to Thank you. Margaret and Donna and team for putting this enormous packet of material together. That is a milestone. A labor of love. Yes. <laughs> Great work committee too. Yes, I wanna thank the committee. It's been an amazing process, so. Yes. Okay, so on to what happens on June 28th. So um, just to, I'm just gonna pull the agenda back up quickly um, as a reminder of what we wanted to talk about. And uh, it seems like we will most likely be able to end early. Can everybody, can I do it correctly? Yes, we can see that. Okay, so, um, you know, as I mentioned at the beginning, I, we want to set, at least initially, a bi-weekly meeting, which is not an easy thing to pull off in the summer. Um, I think, Kathy, we were gonna try and stick with Fridays um, for that. And we haven't, uh, Donna and Tim are working on an outline uh, like the one that we shared at the beginning of, um, I think the PDP that would sort of lay out tentative agendas for the meeting. So you'll have a sense of what's coming. But I think the immediate um, need for discussion today is that we're going to uh, try to schedule a meeting for the, with the net zero subcommittee the week of July 5th, and then have 
a building committee meeting follow that. Now at the moment, the only day that's out for that week, well, there's obviously the fourth and some of you may be taking um, vacations that week because of the holiday, but the fourth is out and the seventh is out because of a conflict Kathy has. So we could do it either fifth, sixth or eighth. Is there anyone who cannot make any of those dates because that will help narrow it for the purposes of Donna, Tim and Rick coordinating with their consultants. Uh, Rupert. Yes, I, um, I think the fifth would be pretty tough for us. It's the first day of summer school. And uh, so it's gonna be all hands on deck trying to get kids in and buildings open. Okay, that's, that's a fair point. Phoebe, I saw your hand up. I was just saying I could not make that week at all. Okay. Any other conflicts? Alicia, well, I, I see Alicia's hand. Um, yeah, sorry. I have the same um, conflict just for the July 5th. Um, like all of my kids are also starting summer camp or summer school that day. Um, so it might be a little bit busy. And then the other dates are all fine, but I have um, like a firm 10 o'clock cutoff. Yeah, okay. So it sounds and like- and Sorry. for me, it's July 6th does not work. July the 5th and 6th are out. Six. So I think that leaves the 8th. So Donna and Tim, I think your task would be to check with your consultants and see if we they could do a meeting, an 8.30 meeting on the 8th. And if not, we'll have to look towards the next week. Yeah, it looks like uh, Simone is not available on the eighth. So, okay. so let's uh, maybe we do a doodle poll or whatever they're called for yeah. the following week or something like that. Kathy, uh, so I, just, I, I just I have one question. I'm, I was trying to take a who couldn't make it. the The concept of the net zero meeting would be. Um, the subcommittee would meet for an hour and a half, and then the full committee would meet to hear a recommendation about ground source. So the full committee wouldn't have to meet for the entire time period. So I yep. don't know whether that changes people's view of, of the fifth or this, maybe the, the sixth. And I'm sorry that the seventh is just I have, if, as those of you can see, I've got one eye done and the other eye gets done oh. on the seven, so. Well, the, the thing that I heard is that Alicia has a hard stop at 10 and I suspect for many others, I, I think that's gonna be hard to tag okay. team these two meetings on top of each other that we should separate them. Okay. Yeah, I was just gonna suggest, we, we, we can certainly incorporate the net zero recommendation at the next building committee meeting, like, so, like so then if we, if we, so Donna, if we separate them, it sounded like the six would meet um, the subcommittee is Jonathan, Rupert, Ben, Kathy, and then anyone else, ed, anyone else is welcome to join for that discussion. So that would get, and does the six work for Simone? Yeah, it appears he, he was out on the eighth. So now we're, we, we've already shot, um, uh, Thornton Tomasetti, an email just to confirm that they're available. Okay, so, so let's let's try for that at least. I don't want to take more time during this meeting, and then if that doesn't work, we'll send out alternative dates. Um, sure. Okay, and then I think what I'd recommend, and we have discussed preliminarily, was having the next building committee meeting on the fifteenth, which is which two weeks. It would be the week after. Yeah, the, the first, second, yeah, it's the Friday of the wow. second week of July. So, yeah. and then we'll, that will be the start off to these bi-weekly bi meetings and we'll be able to bring you an agenda for them at that meeting. Perfect. Do we decide on a, we, we didn't decide on a time, right? For July 6th or are we saying 8.30? Well, well you know, if, if 8.30, we're at a smaller group, Donna, so um, uh, people can say whether they're flexible on times. I mean, that's been a good time, but I don't know. Um, yeah, so well, that's okay. We can we can do that offline. I, I just okay. will just make sure we'll find out what um, 
times that our consultants are available that day. That's fine. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So we'll meet on the, this group will meet on the 15th. And then Donna, do you want to talk a little bit about visits to schools and what you had in mind? Oh, sure. Um, again, timing is everything, right? So our, our goal would be to visit schools with whomever would like to attend. Um, we want to talk to Mike Morris a little bit about if there's any staff particular staff that would be meaningful for them to also visit. And I recognize it's summer. So again, MSBA guidelines and timing is, is everything. But we have identified three schools um, to visit. One is the Mariah Hastings School in Lexington. Um, that is a little bit larger. It's 645 students, but it's about the same. It has very similar design concepts as far as organization of classrooms and layouts and things like that is a beautiful site. It just coincidentally is a uh, utilizes ground source for their heating. So um, that's just coincidental. But so Mariah Hastings was one that's in Lexington. Uh, another one that we have not been to and we're really excited to see is the the Beale School, right? Not the Fails, I get them backwards. The Beale School in uh, Shrewsbury, I believe, is where it's located. And that is a Lamaru Pagano Architects project. And they, they seem to have some pretty beautiful features in their school. And so, again, it would be great to visit that one. And I'm actually drawing a blank. The third school. Sunita Williams. Oh, the Sunita Williams. Thank you. And Needham, um, which actually coincidentally has a lot of similar characteristics in the site as um, Fort River does. And it also has wonderful outdoor classroom areas and learning areas and an amphitheater. And that too, that's um, designed by Dorn Whittier Architects, not our school. So those are the three that we've identified as totally different. Um, they're, you know, you're probably going to like certain aspects of each one, which is great. That's why we're doing this. But we would love to do that as well sometime in July, um, just, just so we can use that as a basis as we continue or, or begin the design process. And, and the exterior materials as well are different at all three schools. So, so they're, they're all three totally different schools and it, it would be wonderful to have folks attend. And if there's other schools that you guys think of, you know, let us know, we're, we're absolutely would love to hear. Okay, Mike, you have your hand up. Yeah, so were you think, thank you so much, Donna. Were you thinking of these as being like a one day, three, school visit given the proximity in Eastern Mass to each other? I know they're not around the corner, but are you thinking of multiple days? Because that would probably affect people's capacity uh, to go. So I didn't know if you thought through that. It's okay if you don't have an answer now. It's just one of the things when I ask folks, oh yeah, July trip, um, Eastern Mass, you know, it, it sometimes can, you know, I get a little more bang for the buck, at least if I get two schools in in a day versus three. So just something to consider again, not something I need an immediate response for. Well, no, that's fine. I can, I can certainly respond. It absolutely makes sense to go to the Sunita Williams and Needham and the Hastings, like you're almost literally driving by one to get to the others. So that those two would definitely make sense to do. Um, I, I would say after, and, and we could we could certainly go to Shrewsbury too. I'm, I'd have to get my geography right, but you sort That's of my Worcester. You can sort of go through that to get to. Mm -hmm. So, so that would be fine. Um, after three, your brain starts going to mush, and you don't recall, and and you think you do, but even taking pictures. So, uh, we would love to organize all three in one day. We would stop. We would have lunch, like we, and and just make a day of it. So, just as a note, the. the Library committee just did this same thing where we did two. Um, it, was, it worked out fine. Jonathan, so I'd be very interested in, in sort of going on on this tour. I'm just wondering, for own purposes, is there 
if for there if there are seven of us on this tour, does it become a moving public meeting? Um, are there other uh, things you, that we need to and not that we have to discuss them today, but are there rules that we're no, going to have to follow? There, you can do this through a site visit um, that's permissible under the okay. open meeting law. Great. Yeah, the, the more folks that we can and, you know, there are pros and cons. We recognize it's summer, so which is really challenging to get some staff to come because I think we'll have more than seven. We'll probably have a little, uh, a large group joining us, but um, school won't be in session except for maybe a camp or something. So that will make it easier in getting permission to go through the schools. The con side of that is the schools won't be in session, so you won't be able to see and hear the noise and the interaction of students. But yep. you know, so um, it it should be fine now. Kathy, um, I totally encourage anybody who can to go on these. I've seen two, so I want to go on them again so I can see them again. But the um, two of the schools have some amazing murals in them that br really bring, when you come into them, just bring the school to life. And we potentially have a percent, a piece of money for commissioning public art. Um, and, and two of them actually have some really interesting outsource, outdoor gardens that are almost like sculptures, you know? So it, it's both the school side of it and some other sides of it and they're the one I so I've been to two of them not the third um in terms of trying to think of the variation so I, it's a nice choice of the three because they are the two I've seen are really different from each other and the third sounds different from the first two so it's it's terrific that they're yeah so so Donna you will be trying to schedule things and then offer some dates out to the committee. We'll just set, sort of see, pick the date that most people, we're not, we're not going to get a date that everybody can go. So we'll get a date that the most people can go and we can, you know, in the past we have van that we can use or something like that to make facilitate transportation from the town. Yep. Um, That's great. Uh, I think I'll probably just start with Mike, just recognizing his staff yep. is on vacation, but yeah. True. That's good. Um, can we just go back to the previous agenda item? I, I wasn't clear on what we decided on meetings going forward. Uh, I know we set the uh, July 15th as our next elementary school building committee meeting. And then after that, because I'm scheduling things on Fridays and I need to, I would like to prioritize this meeting. Are we going to a, you said twice a month meeting or every other week meeting or what? Twice, twice a month and Paul, I can send you the list of dates that I've outlined that um, Donna and Tim and Rick are programming. Um, can we just save them so everybody hears them right now? Yeah. That? Hang on. Give me just a second. Actually, Donna, I don't know if you have that closer to hand. Um, I put it in an email. This may take a minute, so. Okay, okay. So I also think, Margaret, maybe if you have it, if you send it out to everyone right after this meeting, if you can't pull it up now, um, I want to book it on my calendar. So I didn't know whether I should set this up starting with July 15th. Should I just do every two weeks or not? Or are there some weeks we're skipping because it's a Labor Day weekend or something, you know, or it's Thanksgiving or... <laughs> Yeah, the schedule that I established was set up to skip the holidays. Um, hang on one second. While you're doing that, I'm going to ask Sean if there are any invoices that we need to review. So I don't think so, unless Margaret or Donna know of one. I'm not in the office, so I don't have them handy. But the last one we have from answers for May. I thought we did that at the last meeting, but I could be wrong. Margaret, do you remember if we approved yeah. it last time? Okay. Yeah, okay. we so did. No invoices we have to do. Okay. So maybe I'll move to, while, while you're looking for that, we'll move to public comment. And so this is a time for residents. We have two, four, six, eight people in the audience. If anybody would like to make a public comment, we can recognize you up to three minutes and 
first person is Chris Riddle. Oops. So Chris, you're on, if you want to unmute yourself. Um, three questions. Um, largest one is the net zero committee. Is Chris, we can't really hear you. Can't hear me at all? Now we can. Okay. Talk into your microphone if uh, you can. We're going to talk about a schedule for the net zero committee. My question is conceptual. Um, uh, is the uh, basis of design, um, can we change anything in the basis of design uh, during the uh, zero committee meetings? Can the net zero subcommittee recommend changes to anything in the basis of design? That's a question. Mm -hmm. um, uh, then another one has to do with the uh, net zero bylaw or the zero energy bylaw. Um, there, I've mentioned this two or three times and I haven't gotten an answer on it. There's a requirement for an agreed upon energy budget um, uh, that we in the, when creating the bylaw was thinking of more than just an established EU, EUI. Um, uh, uh, what, is, what, is the, what, is the, what does the committee, the building committee plan to do about the energy budget? It has to be the benchmark that the that uh, we uh, we use as the basis of deciding whether the given building complies with the bylaw or not. It's one of the variables that we have to establish in order to determine compliance with the net zero bylaw. Another is peer review. There is a peer review process that's required, and that's ways down the road. But uh, has the building committee thought about that, and uh, how will that work? Or maybe is that uh, already part of the the contractual process um, that is that I don't know about. And lastly, I have a particular question um, having to do with with um, the choice of the of ground source versus air source. Um, it can the uh, do we have any information on whether the groundwater is uh, static or moving? Um, and because that would affect whether or not this thing is going to get too cold. The sub subgrade conditions will get too cold during the uh, which season? <laughs> get too cold during the winter. Uh, okay. Those are my questions. Thank Great. you. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. You know, Chris, if you could put that in writing to to Kathy, so we can have those. That those will be some things that we the Net Zero Committee can address at their meeting. Yep. Um, Rudy. Uh, thanks. Can you hear me, Rudy? Perkins? Yes, we can. Um, I could not find the draft PSR uh, posted in the packet materials for this meeting, um, which made it impossible to look through and comment on. Um, so wasn't really happy about that, but can I at least ask that that be posted soon? Because that material is gonna be useful in thinking about the net zero subcommittee meeting coming up, particularly the sustainability materials, which apparently are um, new and it'd be helpful to see what kind of, have there been changes in the building structural systems, major building systems, the building plans and stuff, that will all really inform the discussion for the net zero committee. So is it is the plan to post this um, very soon so that you know, we have time to look through these documents? Yes, the answer is yes to that question and probably should have been posted before, but it didn't. But um, so we'll make sure that gets posted forthwith. Great, thanks. Yeah, thank you. Maylene, do you want to unmute yourself? Oops. Did we mm -hmm. lose Maylene? Hello, my name is Maylene. I, I live at 497 East Pleasant Street. Wildwood was my neighborhood school. Once I was in fifth grade, I'd start my day with a walk to school with my childhood best friend. We would talk as we walked past the weathered headstones nestled in the spring trees of Wildwood Cemetery. As I continued that walk down the hill to the middle school and with the help of the PBTA down the street to the high school, um, it was also during that time that I began to feel a stark contrast with my peers due to our differences in socioeconomic status. Through tracking, I found myself in classes where I was surrounded mostly by white peers who were significantly more affluent than me. 
I found it difficult to relate to their conversations about skiing or the college tours that their parents had brought them to, knowing that these were experiences that my family could not afford. Yet I maintain that I still belong to these classes because of the connection I had made to ARPS, a connection that had begun with walks. I literally continued that walk when I pursued my degree at UMass Amherst, where I graduated in the 10% of my class studying sociology and education policy, and also became the first in my family to hold a bachelor's degree. My passion for learning about education and equity led me to a career in financial aid where I'm currently working as a financial aid counselor at Holyoke Community College, which is also my mother's alma mater. I could embark on this educational journey because I could take those walks because my mom, when she was a single mother at 18, was offered a subsidized apartment at Village Park. Although I felt small walking past those beautiful homes that bordered Wildwood with their sprawling driveways and gardens and their casually placed grand pianos that could be seen from the side, I still felt like those schools were part of my community. A community where we shared apartment buildings and parking lots. A community where I'd see my mother and her friends, our neighbors, playing cards outside after a long day of work while I go off to play Ding Dong Ditch with my friends. It is for this reason I want to express my wholehearted support to the committee's decision to select Fort River as the site for the new school building, given its proximity to Colonial Village Apartments and the East Street Affordable Housing Project. We often talk about how, di how diverse this town's population is. However, given a diverse, even within a diverse community, there can be a two-tiered system within our schools, which can extend out into the community as well. What would it mean for the community as a whole when we build a brand new school building, one that I am very excited for, right next to, a com next to a community of families who rent? What connections will be forged with the school community? And while, I see, while the kids I see playing in Village Park today may not be able to walk to their elementary school, that neighborhood is still walkable to both the middle school and the high school and can still offer opportunities for connection. The Wildwood site has a lot to offer, and I did experience multiple benefits from campus adjacencies when I was a student. Before I was walking to Wildwood, I was walking past it with my peers in daycare as we watched the construction of the wooden playground with its high castle peaks, which I will say that the playground was amazing in its prime. The site is beautiful, and I enjoyed playing with the surrounding greenery while I was at daycare and at Wildwood. I want to extend my support to the suggestion of using the site for early education. Thank you for all of your work and I look forward to watching as this project continues. Thank you. Thank you, Maylene. Thanks for joining us. Are there any other public comments that anybody would like to make at this point? Maria Kapicki. Can, if you can unmute, you have three yep. minutes. Yep, I'm here, thanks. So um, I was wondering that this meeting that's going to happen for the net zero um, subcommittee next week um, or the week after, I guess, the, is there any additional information beyond what's already been presented and what's in the PSR packet that the net zero subcommittee is going to be using? to make recommendations about ground versus air source. Um, and if there is, could that get posted uh, as soon as possible? Because that's a, a topic of, of great interest to the community. So it'd be nice to be able to re review that ahead of time. Great, great. Thank you for your comment. Is there anybody else who'd like to make a public comment? Seeing none. Now we'll go back to Margaret. You were looking at dates. Yeah. Did you ever find them? Yeah, I have. I'm going to pull up, pull up the schedule. So okay. again, this is this is mostly blank, <laughs> but um, this was the proposal. So um, the here's what this is. This reflects every Friday between um, now and the beginning of January. And so the gray is, would be if we start on the 15th, this would be the biweekly meeting. So, which isn't to say there might not be meetings under, in between. So here on the third, um, we would be able to bring to the committee the net zero discussion. And we are proposing that there be a decision 
by the committee on ground source versus air source at that meeting. Um, as a proposal on the 29th, the end of July, um, I would make a presentation about the construction delivery alternatives. And then um, the rest of this is for um, Denisco to program. Um, the estimates would be going to the cost estimators in early uh, November, as I mentioned previously. And so um, there, and obviously the, we're not gonna meet the week of Thanksgiving. So there's a sort of little bit of wobbliness in here um, about what meetings we will set in November. Um, but by the beginning of December, we would have the cost estimates. Um, by mid-December, we would need to be reviewing the schematic design submission. And then uh, in all likelihood, the first week of January, uh, had, taking a vote to submit schematic design. So um, I really want to bring this back with um, Denisco's input. But this is this was the starting point of our brief discussion about it a couple of weeks ago. So that's helpful. I mean, one note: it, November eleventh is a holiday. Um, yeah, <laughs> you have to change that. But if you could, once you yeah. you and Denisco figure out what the timing and and I love having the little sort of synopsis of what's going to happen on the meeting date, what the goal is. Mm -hmm. um, if you can share that out with the committee members, that would be helpful. Yeah, um, Mike, you have your hand up. Yeah, just briefly. Uh, January 6th is Three Kings Day, which is a, a day off and celebrated in the schools. So, I mean, there's lots of little details we can sort out, yeah. but just in terms of people watching it, you know, just wanted to note that as well. No, Got this it. is, I, it, uh, this is what it's I a work in progress, yeah. Overlay, um, but it sort of shows you conceptually what it is we'll bring back Perfect. to you. Okay. I, I don't consider these dates set in stone at this point at all. It's just, to, but, but by, for, the time, by the time we meet on the 15th, we'll have something confirmed. And for well, future and planning, we can start to pencil this in, right? Yeah, exactly. except I, I, again, as, as Margaret said, we just want to be mindful that we don't have MSBA's deadline yet. And yeah. they are trying to pay a little more attention to school vacation breaks, but uh, we, we could be having a conversation that um, we have to vote in this end of December to submit it, which they, they've done that before. So... So we'll refine this as we get more information. Terrific. Okay. So is there, I think we've accomplished everything, Margaret, that we wanted to and Kathy yeah. on the agenda. Um, I think we had some really good public comments about materials for the, um, zero, the, the um, next meeting on the 6th for the Net Zero Committee for material and, and, and getting that agenda and get the material up in advance. We've been requested. We'll get the PSR um, set up uh, that we reviewed today as soon as possible uh, and put and post that into the meeting packet. Is there anything else, any business not anticipated anybody, or anything else anybody wants to say at this point? Kathy. I just want to give a big thanks to the team um, that pulled together the documents and uh, to the extent they weren't posted, it's probably because I wasn't clear when I, it was a Google link to docs so we can get them posted today. It is it, there now. It is there now? Yeah. Okay. Um, it is where now? Where is it? So it's in the packet. Okay. Preferred schematic report. The, it's, a, it's a draft. It says final, but it's a draft is in the packet for on the city's, on the town's website Great. Thank for, you. for this meeting. Perfect. So I, I just wanted to say thank you. And to the extent it didn't get posted immediately, it was partly because as everyone can see, I had um, <laughs> some eye surgery done, so I didn't double check, but um, it's been just terrific working with you all and seeing the volume of work that went in since we voted the preferred solution. I thank you very much. So I just wanted to give a thanks because a lot of work went into what we just saw. Yes, it did. And, and I just, um, it did say draft or it should, it didn't say draft, it should say draft. There's just a couple of minor wording that we're gonna incorporate with the final, just, just to dot our I's and cross our T's with MSBA, so. Okay. Okay. And with that, our next meeting, uh, Net Zero Committee meets on July 6th at 8.30, I believe. 
and then the, this meeting will meet again on July 15th at 8.30, all via Zoom at that point in time. Um, be, oh, we need we, to be, yeah, I think we still need to confirm the net zero meeting with the consultants. Okay, fair enough. Okay. Uh, and these, we just under the, uh, got, we're allowed to meet via Zoom, exclusively via Zoom until July 15th, um, until the legislature acts. Uh, after that point, we will be in person um, with, we can have remote participation. We anticipate the legislature will act, but they haven't at this point in time. So just people should be alert to that. So, okay, with that, we'll call the meeting adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Have a good weekend. Thank you, Paul. Thanks, Paul.